Have you ever thought about building a bed? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But I think you'll find this two video series full of good ideas that you can apply to a wide range of woodworking projects, including beds. We'll be joining boards with dovetail blocks and template routing the legs. We'll create knockdown joinery for easy disassembly, including with locking rabbits and homemade brackets and with simple dovetails, which are made easy to cut with a little hand saw jig. We'll create a springy platform for extra comfort without a traditional box spring, and the bed itself will appear to float above the floor with no visible legs. If you wish to build a similar bed, or just the headboard to attach to a metal bed frame you already have, we have a set of very detailed plans, including step-by-step -step instructions, cut lists, drawings, and dozens of photos that you'll find in the plan section of our website at stumpynubs.com or at the link below this video. Or you can just enjoy the videos and pick up some tips along the way that may be applied to other projects. Either way, let's get started. We'll be working with ash from a tree from the farm where Pete grew up. Some of the boards are really wide, including the one selected for this headboard, but a single slab just didn't feel right for this bed. Instead, the board will be cut into two pieces, which will be rejoined later with dovetail ties. The idea is to create the appearance of a big slab that is cracked right down the middle or been torn in half. The cut line itself meanders down the length of the board, and a draw knife or a rasp or even a sander may be used to randomly bevel the mating edges so they look naturally formed rather than cut crisp and square. Obviously, making this from a single wide board is ideal, but you could use two separate boards with closely matching grain patterns, especially if that grain is relatively straight. This will give the appearance of a single slab without the need for hard to find extra wide boards. The dovetail ties that will join the two halves back together are extra thick so they'll be strong and so they'll stand proud of the surface. Their precise shape or size isn't very important since each will receive a custom socket. The sockets are formed by clamping the two halves down, positioning the dovetail ties and tracing their shapes. The sockets can then be rough cut with a handsaw. It's a good idea to cut a little bit inside your lines, leaving the socket a little undersized. Then you can slightly bevel the edges of the dovetail tie toward its back side. This creates a wedging effect as they're tapped into place, ensuring a tight fit on the visible side of the headboard. They're unlikely to fully seat at this point, so note where the fibers appear shiny or crushed on the sides of the block. You can then file these high points down as you further customize the fit. Before they're glued in place, the front edges are chamfered with a chisel and sanded smooth. Then it's time for some glue and some gentle persuasion with a mallet. Don't pound until something breaks. You can always make adjustments with a chisel or a rasp. The ties are intended to stay a little proud of the surface. Any visible gaps can be hidden with a little glue and sawdust. The headboard will require two legs to support it. Sometimes when making multiple identical parts, it pays to create a template to work from. This one is made from quarter inch plywood. It's rough cut at the bandsaw, then the edge of the bench is used along with a flush trim router bit to make the template edges nice and straight. And the curved end is refined at the sander. Taking a little extra time to get the template perfect will pay off over and over again as you use it to make your identical project parts. Those parts are roughed out at the bandsaw, leaving them about an eighth of an inch oversized all the way around. The template is then attached with good double stick tape and a router with a flush trim bit may be used to cut the part to its precise size and shape. If you're wondering what these little blocks of wood are for, let me end the suspense for you. They're attached to the bottom of the headboard's legs. This creates a place where the bed frame can rest when the headboard is installed later. How about some finish? We use a lot of armor seal on projects like this because it's very easy to apply and of good quality. It's pretty thin, so the first coat will soak in quite a bit. Just flood it on and let the wood drink it up. Then wipe away the excess with a cloth. You'll need three coats, lightly sanding between them with 320 grit or finer, and then buffing the last coat with a brown paper bag. It's that simple. If you have a steel bed frame, you could screw it right to the legs of this headboard and be done with it. But if we're gonna bother making a wood headboard, we may as well make a wood bed frame to match, am I right? We'll do that in part two, which should be released tomorrow. If it's already tomorrow, check below this video for a link to that video and for a link to those project plans I mentioned. See you next time. If you get what you pay for, then why are bandsaw blades so inexpensive at sawblade.com? 
Seriously, they're as good as any I've used. They come in any size you need, and they cost quite a bit less than anything comparable at the woodworking retailers. Try them for yourself at the link below this video. You'll see. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.